What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Daft Previews, and we're back here once again to give you the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview you are going to see. In this video, we'll share outlier, we'll go through all the key players, all the key matchups, talk about their lines, talk about what I like, and talk about what I don't. And I do all this to give you all the information to cash in those bets. Now, we switched up the strategy yesterday. We brought out the bat, bad ass parlay. And it absolutely cashed almost plus 500 odds. That's money in the bank. We also went four and two on two unit single bets. So a lot of profit was made and we're going to do it all again. So let me know in the comment section. Hashtag BAP if you're going to ride with me. Let's go. So we're kicking it off with the Charlotte Hornets versus the Orlando Magic. There's no game time decisions in this one. So all the player props are currently available. Now let's get it. We're starting with Jalen Suggs in this game. Now, his points prop here is at 10 and a half. The matchup against the Charlotte Hornets is not a great one, but it's not too difficult either. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10 games. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he's covered in two out of his last four. If you're interested in looking at his three-point market, lines at one and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10, four consecutive games. Now, the matchup is pretty good, but he's only hit this in one out of his last four games against the Charlotte Hornets. Jumping into Gary Harris. His points props at seven and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10, but only one out of his last five. Tough matchup here against the Hornets, but he has cash in three out of his last four games. If you like his three-point market, the line's at one and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. The matchup's not too bad, and he's covered in two out of his last four against the Hornets. Get into Wendell Carter Jr. Now, his points prop is at 11 and a half. He's got a great matchup here against the Hornets. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games. You're getting 11 and a half at plus money. And he's cashed this in five consecutive games against the Charlotte Hornets, which is huge. I love that type of hit rate. I'll look into this a little bit further because I do like what I see. But as you know, all my bets will be placed in the pinned comment, usually about an hour after I upload the video. So when no cut of points, that's not a bad prop. Looking at his rebound prop, seven and a half. He's got a good matchup here. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. In terms of head-to-head -head matches, he's hitting three of his last five, but three consecutive games now against the Charlotte Hornets. So I honestly don't mind that one either. Looking at his assist prop, because I did cash on this against the Toronto Raptors, over one and a half assists, minus 117. The matchup against the Hornets is a difficult one, but he's covered in seven out of his last 10, five consecutive games, and four out of his last five games against the Hornets. So to be honest, the whole PRA might look good here for Wendell Carter Jr., He's covered that in five consecutive games against the Hornets. He's covered that in six of his last 10 games. Uh, but points plus rebounds could also be a play. But I find that doing um, some research in my previous picks that just picking one prop, if possible, tends to work out a little bit better. So I'll research that a little bit further and see which one I like the most. Looking at Paolo Banquero in this one. His points prop 21 and a half. The matchup's not too bad against the Hornets, covering in six out of his last 10. He's covered in four consecutive games against the Hornets, four out of his last five. So I don't hate his points prop in this one. I do lean to the over. Some alternate lines, perhaps. We can make its way to our BAP, but we shall see. Looking at his assist numbers, five and a half the line. Good matchup, four out of his last 10, and only two out of his last five against the Hornets. And his rebound numbers, seven and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10 and only two out of five against the Hornets. So going under in three straight. Jumping into Franz Wagner. Now his points prop, 18 and a half. He's got a great matchup here against the Hornets. He's covered this in four out of his last 10, two consecutive games. But against the Hornets, he's only covered in two out of his last six. So I wouldn't take any points prop for Franz with any confidence. Looking at his assist numbers, Three and a half the line. He's covered in five out of his last 10, three straight. And in head to head matchups, only one out of his last six against them. Rebound wise, lines at five and a half, three out of his last 10, and he's covered in three out of his last six against the Hornets. So the matchup is very good for Franz for all props, but his performances have been wildly inconsistent. So I'd be very hesitant on betting on that. And have a look at the Charlotte Hornets now, starting with Trey Mann. His points prop, 11 and a half, does have a tough matchup. He's covered in four out of his last 10, scored 18 points when they versed the Magic not too long ago, about two weeks ago. His assist prop, four and a half, tough matchup, three out of his last 10, only had four assists against the Magic. And his rebound numbers, four and a half as well, 
four out of his last 10. Did have six six rebounds when he versus the Orlando Magic last time. It's a very small sample size, and I wouldn't have any confidence in beating Trey Mann at this point in time. Um, Vasily Michik, we've taken a few bets on him, unfortunately. Failed to cash in our last two, but let's cap this one up. So lines at 12 and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. Had a great game against the Magic last time, scoring 21 points. Looking at his assists, six out of his last 10 games, but against the Orlando Magic last time, he only had four assists. And his rebound prop, two and a half. He's covered in only four of his last 10. Did have five rebounds against the Magic, but a very inconsistent rebounder. So for him, I'd probably be looking at points plus assists. So he has covered that in seven out of his last 10. Had 25 of these against the Magic last time, but the matchup is a difficult one. So treading carefully around Michik, having a look at Brandon Miller. His points props at 16 and a half. The matchup is a difficult one against the Magic, but he did score 18 points against them last time, covering in six out of his last 10. His rebound prop is at three and a half. Tough matchup. He's covered in seven out of his last 10, but he did have five rebounds against the Magic last time, as covered in two consecutive games. Jumping into Miles Bridges, his points prop 20 and a half. Matchup's a tough one. Five out of his last 10 games. Struggled against the Magic last time with only seven. Scored 23 points prior to that. And then his rebound prop here is seven and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10, which is great. The problem, only had three rebounds against the Orlando Magic last time. Played 36 minutes and really struggled. So he's had a really good game in all props against the Magic, but he's also had a terrible one too. Chances are he bounces back, but I wouldn't feel too confident backing either of those. Let's jump into the next game. So we're jumping into the Houston Rockets versus the Washington Wizards. Now, limited lineups at the moment, and that's mainly for the Wizards because Kyle Kuzma is a game-time decision. They've got Tyus Jones, Denny Advia's out, Marvin Bagley. Surely this is tanking. They can't all be injured. For the Rockets, all of their players are available, so we'll start with Kyle Kuzma, then we'll jump into the Rockets. So Kyle Kuzma's points lines at 22.5. He's covered in eight out of his last 10 games. The matchup with the Rockets is a good one. Kyle Kuzma is also covered in two consecutive games against Houston. Given the number of players are out, I can't help but lean to the over, but I'm going to add this to my short list of things to investigate a little bit later. Taking a look at Kuzma's assist numbers, his line's at four and a half. He's gone under in two straight games against the Rockets. The matchup is good, but he's only covered in three out of his last 10. We look at his rebound line at seven and a half, four out of his last 10 games, and only one of his last two against the Houston Rockets. So his points one probably has the most interest from my end, but too early to say whether I'm going to take it. Heading over to the Houston Rockets, we'll start with Fred Van Vliet. So his points prop here is at 20 and a half. He has covered this in six out of his last 10 games. Got a good matchup against the Wizards. And in head-to-head matchups, he did score 27 points the last time they played. His three-point line is at three. He's covered this in four out of his last 10. Finished right on three in his last three games. And he also had three the last time he versus the Wizards. His assist numbers, seven and a half, but it's minus 151. Got a great matchup. He's most likely to go go over here, covering in seven out of his last eight games. Last time against Washington, he finished with nine assists. So especially if there's no Sengun out, I'd take Fred Van Vliet, um, seven and a half assists against almost anybody up against the Wizards. It just feels so obvious to me, right? So might not be something that I bet on, but if you're using one of those apps where you just simply have to pick over or under, I think this is a great pick. Looking at his rebound numbers, that line's at four and a half. He's covered this in four out of his last 10 games. Good matchup, but he only had three rebounds last time against the Wizards. So taking a look at Jalen Green. Been playing quite well without Sengun. Two out of three games he's gone over since Sengun's been out. Matchup-wise, great matchup against the Wizards. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. Scored 37 points the last time he played the Wizards. Uh, That wasn't that long ago, actually. Four days ago. Covering in one out of his last three against them. Looking at his assist numbers, his line's at three and a half. He's covered this in four out of his last 10, but he only had two assists the last time he played the Wizards. Covering in one out, uh, two out of his last three. And then looking at his rebound prop, six and a half's the line. He's covered that in three consecutive games now without Shangun in the lineup. He does have a good matchup here. Uh, and in head-to-head matches, one out of his last three, but did get eight rebounds the last time he played them. So... Yeah, his rebound prop does have my interest. His points prop does too as well, to be honest, but I don't mind either, so I'll look into those a bit later. So we've got Jabari Smith Jr., good matchup, just like everybody else. 
Uh, four out of his last 10, he's covered 15 and a half. Scored 16 points the last time he versed the Wizards, which was four days ago, covering in two out of his last three. Rebound-wise, line's at nine and a half. He's gone under in three consecutive games without Shangun in the lineup. He's also gone under in three consecutive games against Washington. So if we look at the under, you're getting minus 115. With the chance of a blowout as well, I actually don't mind this, looking at the under for Jabari Smith Jr. So I'll check that one out. Uh, who else is there? We can look at, have a look at Eamon Thompson. His number's going to be all over the place. Yeah, his last two games have been great, though. Lines at 14 and a half. He's covered in three of his last 10. But let's go two out of his last three without Shingun and 20 points against the Wizards last time. His assist numbers, three and a half. One out of three without Shingun. And then his rebound numbers, one out of three without Shingun. Had 11 rebounds last time. Lines at nine and a half. That seems very high, in my opinion. I get it. He didn't have 11 rebounds last time. But, yeah, not something I'd be willing to bet on. Pumping the brakes once again. I just wanted to really speak to your wall and go eye to eye with you. Firstly, to celebrate the first uh, rendition of running a BAP worked. Badass parlay, which some of you guys are calling it. Apparently, bitch ass parlay didn't land very well, but the BAP, very successful, plus 500 odds, and it really hit sweat free. So I'm pretty happy that it came home. I'll be doing that once again. I know you guys love the one, you just like parlays full stop, but. The fact that they're winning and you can get such great odds, um, it's going to generate a lot more traffic to the channel as well. So we'll keep the BAPs running, so be sure to use hashtag BAP in the comments section below. I'm also looking at doing some extra videos every single weekend, so we'll do this type of format every single day, but on the weekends, I want to double down and put an extra piece of content out there for you. So I'd love to get your opinions on what other types of sports betting content would you like me to create. Truth About Parlays is already on my list of things to do. But if there's something else you would like me to do a video about, please let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, 60% of the people who watch this are not subscribed. So subscribe, turn on those notifications so you do not miss these videos every single day. We're getting very close to the goal of 5,000. I want to hit it by the end of March. Based on how we're tracking, I think we'll hit it in the next four to five days. But if we can hit that even sooner, even better. Now let's go get back to the preview. So looking at the Brooklyn Nets versus New Orleans Pelicans, we've got Herb Jones as a game time decision, as well as Dorian Finney-Smith. So we're checking out DFS real quick, mainly just his points prop, because I know he does get jiggy with it at times. And he does have a tough matchup, but he has hit this line in eight out of his last 10 games. And head-to-head -head matchups, only scored three points the last time against the Pelicans, so I'd be hesitant. I wouldn't make a bet purely based on his last 10 numbers because he struggled against the Pelicans in the past. We've got Nick Claxton. He did let me down uh, up against Wemby. Only scored 11 points. He got stuck on that number for so long. Absolutely killed me. Needed one more basket. But what we can say about Claxton, his matchup's not too bad against the Pels. He's covered this in six out of his last 10, but has gone under in three straight. Uh, he's only covered in one out of his last three against the Pelicans. Rebound-wise, his matchup is great. He's covered this line in seven out of his last 10. Had a great reading, rebounding performance against the Spurs with 14. But in head-to-head -head matchups with the Pelicans, he's only covered in one out of his last three, only securing three boards the last time he played them. So I ain't loving that. We've got Dennis Schroeder. I have made some bets on him as of late and been hitting him quite well. So he's been producing, especially at an alt line of 10 points. Like Dennis Schroeder's been getting busy. Now, he does have a tough matchup here against the Pels, but he's covered this in six out of his last 10. He's covered 10 points in 10 consecutive games now. His assist number, six and a half. Check this out. He's covered in eight out of his last 10. Does have a difficult matchup here against the Pels, though, but his numbers as of late have been great. Very consistent performances out of Dennis Schroeder. I like that. Cam Thomas just came back from injury not long ago. It looks like he's played five games since coming back from injury, and he's covered this game in this line of 21 and a half in four out of his last five. His matchup isn't too bad here against the Pels. So four out of five since he just returned from injury. Problem, though, has struggled against the Pelicans in the past, but did play limited minutes. He shot poorly. He shot zero from 11 the last time he played them, so that makes me a little bit hesitant. But his form over his last five games has been great. Assist numbers, I don't know. I didn't even know he was capable of passing the ball, but he does have a good matchup. He's covered this in uh, three out of his last five games since his return from injury. Uh, has struggled in head-to-head -head matchups. So, And we'll look at his three-point market real quick. Line is at two and a half. He's covered this in two out of his last five games. 
head-to-head matches, hasn't hit a three-pointer against them. So, yeah, Cam Thomas, recent form is great. Hasn't had much luck against the Pelicans in the past, but he wasn't playing that many minutes. My favorite player is on the slate, Mikael Bridges. His line's at 18 and a half. Um, matchup's a difficult one. He's covered in only three out of his last 10 games. And in head-to-head matchups, he scored 13 points against them last time, shot four from 11 from the field. His assist number's at three and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games, which is pretty good. Uh, head-to-head matchups, struggled. So they got blown out the last time they played him. So a lot of these head-to-head data is going to say, don't take the bet. And I'm honestly agreeing with it. I don't feel like taking any of these Nets players. Maybe Dennis Schroeder for an alternate line, but... Yeah, outside of that, not too much. Mikhail Bridges, seven out of his last 10 games, he's covered this rebound line. Head-to-head matches, struggled. So, yeah, a little bit hesitant to bet on those. But let's jump into the New Orleans Pelicans because some of their players have been shooting the lights out as of late. Brandon Ingram. Now, he's not one of them. He's inconsistent as hell, and he frustrates me to death. He's got a tough matchup. His line's at 19 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Head-to-head matchups, scored 12 points on the blowout win against Brooklyn earlier this season, 28 points against them last year. And looking at his assist numbers, that's down to five and a half. It was sitting at six and a half for the last game. He's covered this in five out of his last 10, uh, but he's gone under in two consecutive games against the Nets. His rebound line, five and a half, six out of his last 10, one out of his last two against the Nets. So I'm not feeling Brandon Ingram at all in this one. Who else we got? Zion Williamson. So we cashed in Zion Williamson's over in his last game. So he's been shooting quite well. Three, four consecutive games now he's covered this line. His matchup is a difficult one, though. The Nets allow the fewest points to power forwards on the season. In terms of head-to-head matchups, he's gone under in two consecutive games against the Brooklyn Nets. So that makes me a little bit hesitant. His recent form is great, but look, hesitant nonetheless. Turning to his assists, he's covered this line of five and a half in four out of his last ten. Has gone under in two consecutive games against the Nets. And his rebound props at seven and a half. Five out of his last ten games. And only one of two against Brooklyn. Lastly, who else do we have? Let's have a look at Trey Murphy. Just his points prop. So his points prop is five out of his last ten games. He's got a great matchup here. Um, Five out of his last ten. Scored 11 points last time against Brooklyn. 16 points prior to that. So that's what's screaming out to me. CJ McCollum... I didn't want to look at his because I don't feel like betting on this guy at all because he's crazy. Look at his numbers. Capable of 30, capable of 2. So his line's at 15 and a half. He's got a good matchup. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Head-to-head matches has covered in three consecutive games against the Brooklyn Nets. Looking at his assist numbers, that line's at three and a half, four out of his last 10, had eight assists against Portland, and he's covered this in three consecutive games against the Brooklyn Nets. And then his rebound number is at three and a half as well. Seven out of his last 10 games and three consecutive games against the Brooklyn Nets. So it would be easy to get misconstrued by CJ McCollum because he has great numbers against this team. Firstly, his rebounds, his assists, and even his points line is a lot lower right now compared to what they were the last time he played Brooklyn. So his form's definitely down. So his hit rate against those teams and numbers is great, but they're down for a reason, right? You're not stumbling upon something great here. His prop lines are lower intentionally. All right. We're jumping into the Dallas Mavericks versus the San Antonio Spurs. How great was Kyrie Irving in that game winner? That was absolutely wild. Uh, Luke is a game time decision as well as Dante Exum as well as Brandon Williams as well. But a lot of markets are available at the moment. We'll start with Luca. His points prop, 33 and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. He's got a great matchup here against the Spurs, but he's only covered this in two out of his last five games against them. Looking at his assist numbers, 10 and a half is the line. Six out of his last 10 games. Good matchup, but he's gone under in five straight games against the Spurs. His rebound line's at nine and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. He's covered in two out of his last five against the Spurs. So Luka, as great as he is, I'd have to say he's too great because these lines are too high for me to bet, so I shan't be touching them. Daniel Gafford, his points prop, it's over nine and a half or 10 and a half, depending on where you get it from. But in his last 10 games, he's covered this six times. He's got a great matchup here against the Spurs. Center's been feasting against them. And in head-to-head matchups, Gafford scored 10 points the last time he versed the Spurs back in February. His rebound numbers, seven and a half. He's covered this in two out of his last 10. He'd have 10 rebounds against the San Antonio Spurs last time. So I don't mind that because 
as great as Wemby is, he's given up a lot of boards, does give up a lot of points as well, but definitely on the rebound side of the ball. I'm liking that prop. Also, we've got Derek Jones Jr. His last four out of his last five games have been pretty decent. So let's check it out. You can see his points prop here. He's covered in four out of his last five games. Matchup, somewhat difficult though. And he's only covered in one of three against the Spurs. So I won't be taking that. Um, who else is there? Kyrie Irving, left-handed maestro, currently through Ramadan, putting it all together. Now his points prop, 25 and a half. He's covered in three out of his last 10 games against the Spurs. He scored 34 points against them last time. Did go under in his other two games against them. His assist numbers at five and a half. He's been hitting this very well as of late. Let's check that out. 10, 12, and nine in his last three games. Does have a good matchup. And he has covered in three consecutive games against the Spurs. Look, five and a half plus money. Something that I can muck around with. So I'll add that to my short list right now. Uh, looking at his rebound numbers, four and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10 games. Does as a good matchup. Had nine rebounds last time against the Spurs, but did go under the two games prior to that. So um, Kyrie, his assist numbers, you got my attention. Jumping into the Spurs. Honestly, let's not waste your time. There's two players that are really worth looking into who here because everybody else's form lines are going to be absolutely nuts, but we might do three. His points prop, 20 and a half for Devin Vassell. Six out of his last 10 games he's covered. He's got a good matchup here against Dallas, but struggled in his last two games, covering in one out of his last three. Assists, the line's at four and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. Another good matchup here. Has covered in his last two games against the Dallas Mavericks. And his rebound prop, that's at four and a half, six out of his last 10, only one out of his last three against Dallas. Victor Wembenyama, let's talk about it. His points prop, 23 and a half, somewhat difficult matchup here against Dallas. Five out of his last 10 and one out of his last two. He scored 26 points in his last matchup against the Mavericks. Looking at his assist line, it's four and a half now. This thing is growing at a rapid rate. Six out of his last 10, does have a tough matchup, but covered in one of his last two. And his rebound line is at 11 and a half. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. And he's gone under in two consecutive games against the Dallas Mavericks. So not man enough to take the under on Wemby for anything, but I'm also not confident enough to take an over for anything. Jeremy Sohan, his line's at 13 and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup here against Dallas. He's covered in two out of his last four. His assist numbers at two and a half. Five out of his last 10 and two out of his last four. Rebound numbers. His most consistent prop here is covered in seven out of his last 10. Does have a great matchup, but he's covered in two out of his last four against Dallas. So from this particular game, I'm thinking Daniel Gafford rebounds, Kyrie assists is the only main plays that I'd honestly consider taking. But let's jump into the next one. I think it's the best game of the day, to be honest, but it all depends on if everybody plays. So... It's the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Denver Nuggets. What we can see here is Rudy Gobert and Nas Reed, both game time decisions in this one. So if they're both out, the Timberwolves are going to be very thin inside and Nikola Jokic is going to go crazy. But let's start with Anthony Edwards. His line's at 28 and a half. Five out of his last 10 games, he's covered this line, three consecutive. And against Denver, five out of his last 10 games, well, four out of his last five to be honest, but we're looking at some playoff numbers in there. Looking at his assist numbers, lines at four and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Tough matchup, five out of his last 10 against the Nuggets. Head to head number, I mean, pff, rebound numbers. He's covered in four consecutive games now. Not to, no surprise. A lot of these games are without Carl Anthony Towns. Four out of his last 10, but in head to head matchups, four out of his last 10 somewhat inconsistent, and the matchup is a difficult one. I did consider taking his rebounds plus assist today against Utah, given his, his recent form. I think the line was 10.5. I didn't take it, but he absolutely cashed. So rebounds plus assists has been a great play as a late. I'm pretty sure it looks much better when you remove Carl Anthony Towns. So check that out. He's covered in six out of his last 10, four consecutive games now. He's covered his rebounds plus assists. He does have a difficult matchup for both of those, but despite his strong form as of late, 10 and a half, the line hasn't moved. So that could be the matchup playing a part in that. But into these Denver Nuggets, we'll start with Jamal Murray. So you'll find a lot of these players do have a difficult matchup here against Minnesota. 
Uh, but his points prop, 20 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games and against the Timberwolves, four out of his last eight. His assist number is six and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last eight games, which is pretty impressive. Has only covered in two of eight against the Timberwolves. His rebound numbers at three and a half, six out of his last 10. He's covered in five out of his last eight. Four consecutive games against the Timberwolves. He's gone over. Having a look at MPJ, Michael Porter Jr., his points prop, 16 and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. Uh, of all the matchups against the Timberwolves, he probably has the easiest one. Seven out of his last 10, and he's covered in only five of his last 10 against them, going under in three consecutive games. His three-point prop, six out of his last 10, and only four of 10 against the Timberwolves. His rebound numbers, six and a half to the line. He's covered this in four straight, seven out of his last 10. The matchup's not too bad, and he's covered this in three of 10 games against the Timberwolves. AG, Aaron Gordon, points props at 13 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games, four out of his last nine against the Timberwolves. His rebound number, five and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10, five out of his last nine against the Timberwolves. So not too many consistent plays that I'm really finding on this slate, to be honest. But let's see what the Joker's got. His line's at 25 and a half. Tough matchup here against the Tim Wolves, but we don't know, if, don't know if Rudy or Nas are going to be there. So if both of those are out. It's those two and Carl Anthony Towns. So their first three options to pick up Nikola Jokic are all gone. He's covered this line, though, of five out of his last 10 games in head-to-head matchups, his last nine. His assists are at eight and a half, only three of his last 10, and six out of his last nine against the Tim Wolves. And his rebound numbers at 11 and a half, five out of his last 10, and only three out of his last nine against the Minnesota Timberwolves. So, yeah, not really feeling anything from Joker in that one. But obviously, in these previews, I'm going through them. A lot of the times, this is the first time I've seen it. Today, it definitely is. Clearly, I've just got him back from work. I do have a basketball game on tonight. So, I'm going to finish recording this, get to that game, do stuff with the fam, come back, finish editing, upload, research a little bit further, and then get shit rolling through that ping comment. So, um, look, I just wanted to say I do appreciate all the, the love and support. The comments have been great. You guys have been extremely supportive, even despite the struggles that we've gone through in terms of picking winners in the bets. I know you guys are really loving the content. So, I'm really working to make sure I deliver on these, trying to improve these videos every single day. I have quickened up pace a little bit um, just to get through more players for you without hammering home on one particular player. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that. If you do want to support me, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, watch your video all the way to the end, like you probably would have here. And let's get busy. The road to 5,000 subscribers, we're getting very close. I think we hit that in the next three to four days. Let's go. Best of luck. Remember, put BAP in the comments. Let's do it. Ciao. Up to the channel cause your boy's getting busy Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily It's all free, you don't even have to pay me